Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, a star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country to another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Epiphany. If you're visiting today on behalf of all of us, a very a loving welcome uh, to you. We're honored by your presence. Today, of course, is the feast of the Epiphany a word that means showing or manifestation. The wise men were non-Jews, Gentiles, we say, and they were representing the entire non-Jewish world to proclaim, to manifest, that Jesus Christ was the Savior, not just of small group, the chosen people, the Jews, but that Christ was the longed-for Messiah of the entire world. And uh, we always have to be aware of that. The Pope keeps reminding us we're not some kind of an exclusive club, but we should continually be going out and inviting people to come in to accept the Savior of the world. Now, these wise men, the Magi, embarked on a long and perilous uh, journey to find the Christ child. You and I are on a similar journey. Now, it's not that we need to find Christ. Because if you are here today, it means that you've already found him. And no doubt you already love him. 
Rather, our journey, for those of us who are here today, is a journey to a deeper relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, to travel more deeply into the heart of Christ. And there, in the sacred heart of Jesus, if we're serious, we experience his tender love for us personally. We experience his devotion to us. He wants in his heart to console us and to encourage us. For example, of this morning, if there's some sort of hurt in your life, or if there's some sort of fear in your life. Jesus is saying, make the journey to my heart. There he wants to strengthen us. And he wants to teach us of the tender love of God the Father for us. Our entire lives should be a journey into his heart. That is, a journey to a deeper relationship with the Savior. Now, the journey is a real adventure. It's sometimes exciting. It's often wrought with real danger. There is the sinful allurement of the world. There is just the weakness of our own flesh. And there are actual temptations that come from the devil. And obviously, the evil one doesn't want us to make this journey into the heart of Christ. He'd like for us to be superficial. The enemy will try to convince us, for example, that this Christian way to the heart of the Savior is boring or monotonous. Going into Jesus' heart, which he invites you to do this morning, is an is a, a exciting journey. It's never dull. Christ's heart is the great treasure which is worth the struggle that we make. Knowing this treasure, we find that it's worth every danger and obstacle that we overcome. Okay, now pay attention to this. And I want to especially uh, encourage uh, those who are preparing for the sacraments of baptism and confirmation in the Eucharist in this regard. Pay attention. Wisely, the Magi did not undertake their journey alone. Each of the uh, wise men sought out the others. They traveled, they explored, they studied together. And it was together that they came to Bethlehem and found the Christ. This is important. It's insane to say I'm spiritual but I don't belong to a church. It's impossible. We can't make the journey into Christ's heart alone. It'd be foolish and we're bound to fail. God has given us companions. Look around. God has given us a family, fellow travelers. He's given us the universal church, the Catholic church. We don't walk alone. Maybe you live alone, but you're not making this journey into the heart of Christ by yourself. Brothers and sisters, we are nourished at this Mass. Never miss a Sunday Mass, ever. 
We're nourished at this Mass with the Word of God. We're nourished by the bread of angels, which is the Most Holy Eucharist. We have the sacraments, especially reconciliation. If you haven't been to confession in a long time, don't put it off because with it, Christ will bring you closer to his heart. You'll go deeper into that journey. We even have the saints who are willing to be our companions on the way and accompany us. Together, we give one another constant encouragement, companionship, and we offer one another our prayers. So today is epiphany. Christ wishes, he desires, he, he yearns to show us himself in a new way, to reveal new things to us in his heart, if we're willing to make that journey into his heart. Those who embark on the journey will find a great adventure and they won't be disappointed. Come, let us worship Christ in this Mass together. Please stand.